Today we're going to talk about the advantages of using an editing tablet instead of a mouse for photo editing. So let's get started. Hello friends, my name is Brennan from vwillcreative.com where we talk about photography and photo editing, but today we're talking about these bad boys right here called photo editing tablets and what they can do for your editing. Now at first you might be thinking, why the heck do I need a photo editing tablet when my mouse does a perfectly good job? And I mean, that is a fair point. However, once you see what these tablets can do for you, you'll be wondering why you didn't switch over sooner. Editing tablets were something that I thought were not really worth my time when I first started photo editing. However, once I got into the world of composites and I was doing a lot of cutting out images, making masks, painting adjustments onto my photos and things like that, I realized that there were a lot of limitations that come with a mouse and that is just because you can't really make those precise adjustments very easily. With a editing tablet, however, you're using a pen instead of a mouse, and the easiest way I like to compare these two things is a mouse is like working with a brick versus this is like working with a fine point Sharpie. It's a lot easier to get those precise adjustments with an editing tablet and a pen versus a mouse that just uses one basic brush size and setting for every adjustment you make. With an editing tablet, you can adjust the flow, opacity, and even the size of your brush just by how hard or the angle that you're pressing on your tablet with. So in this tutorial, we're gonna go through a few examples of how an editing tablet really makes a difference in your work and an exact comparison between the brush strokes made with a mouse versus with a pen. So let's hop into Photoshop and discover once and for all if editing tablets are worth your time. Now with some editing adjustments, obviously you're just moving sliders around and things like that. And when you're using an editing tablet, it's not gonna make much of a difference whether you're moving a slider with a pen or a mouse. Where things start to change is when you're using layer masks or trying to paint adjustments onto your photo. So to give you an example of this, I'm going to apply a curves adjustment layer mask onto this image just to try to brighten some of the rocks around in the foreground here. So let's start by creating a curves adjustment layer here and I'll just add a random bit of color contrast like so. Dragging that up and bringing that down. Now we have our layer mask here and I'll just press command or control I to invert that mask, make everything transparent so now we can paint that adjustment back on. With my brush tool selected, I'll set white to my foreground color and I'll just select a soft round brush. For this, I'm just using a basic brush here. Everything is set to the default options and now I can just begin to paint onto my layer mask. Adjusting my brush size as needed, I'll just begin to paint over the areas I wanna brighten and it does apply the curves adjustment. Everything looks pretty good and this is the way that you're likely working with your masks or brush adjustments right now in your photo editing. So looking at our layer mask, holding alt or option, clicking on that layer mask, you can see that all of that white area is the visible parts of our curves adjustment layer. There isn't really anything exceptional or unique about this mask except it just is a soft brush like the one that we selected earlier. Now let's go through and apply these adjustments around other parts of our photo, but this time with the pen. Now before I start working with the pen, I'm gonna make sure that the pressure sensitivity option is checked off, and I'm also gonna press the opacity option here. So that means that depending on how hard I press my pen, I'm gonna get different size and opacity values on my mask. So this really helps to refine things and make it look a little more realistic. Doing the exact same thing as before, painting with white on the layer mask, I'm just going to go and add that curves adjustment layer over a few different spots in the image. I'm going to go between painting really hard to get a more obvious effect and then I'll go to painting a little bit lighter just to have a subtle brightening in parts of the photo. Now the thing that I really enjoy about working with an editing tablet is that it feels a little bit more like drawing versus working on a computer and for me drawing feels a little bit more therapeutic and natural so when I'm working on photos for a long period of time, I find that just using a tablet feels more comfortable in all honesty. So besides the technical advantages, it just feels nicer to use in my opinion. 
So now that I've applied those adjustments on, I have the mouse adjustments here and the pen adjustments everywhere else. Let's view our layer mask one more time. Holding Alt or Option, clicking on that layer mask, you can now see where we had our original mouse adjustments versus our pen adjustments here. And with our pen adjustments, you see that parts of it are gray, parts are a little bit more white, and they vary in size significantly, even though we were using the exact same brush settings. And this is all because of the sensitivity that your tablet has that your mouse cannot translate into Photoshop. So the result is better blended brush and layer mask adjustments onto your images because you have that more fine-tuned control over where your adjustments appear. Now you might be kind of confused by seeing these adjustments on a layer mask. So let's go and compare a mouse brush stroke versus a pen brush stroke side by side. So in our new document here, I'll just create a new layer to draw our brush strokes on. And then I'm gonna go and select a different brush. This time I'll select a manga brush. And by the way, if you want to download these brushes, they're totally free with the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. Just go on the gear icon and then click on import brushes and you can get a whole bunch of awesome ones there. Anywho, we are going to click on this manga brush option and then I'll just pick a random blue color here, leaving all my brush settings as is. I'll enlarge that brush and just create a single curvy stroke with my mouse. So as you see, it's just a solid color. It followed the curve of our mouse, but there's nothing really that special about it. Now let's go and compare that to the pen. So once again, I'm going to make sure that my sensitivity is checked off and I'm going to click off the opacity option. Now these options were turned off with the mouse brush stroke, but it wouldn't have mattered because the mouse does not translate sensitivity to Photoshop. It just tells it where to paint the brush. Now let's compare that to the tablet here doing the exact same brush. I'm going to just paint a little bit lighter, press a little harder and so on. And now you can see how much different that brush looks compared to our mouse. Exact same settings, except you can see how it has a lower opacity over here because I was painting lighter. And then as I press harder, it gets darker while also getting thicker as well. And so that's the huge advantage to using a tablet right there is that you can control the opacity and the size of your brush with one movement. Otherwise with your mouse, you would have to go and manually adjust the opacity, manually adjust the brush size, and it's just a pain in the butt versus with an editing tablet, you can do that all at once while you're painting brush strokes. Now to give you another example, when you're using a mouse, it's really hard to make fine curves and specific shapes with a mouse versus when you're drawing because drawing on a tablet just feels a little bit more natural. So this time I'm going to just decrease the brush size here and I'm now using my mouse for this brush stroke. I'm going to try to make my signature. So creating my signature here, it looks pretty normal. Everything is working fine. However, it's just kind of bland and it looks a little bit like a toddler wrote it. Maybe that's just my signature or maybe it's just the mouse. Trying that again with the pen, look how much different it appears. Comparing these two, although they look relatively similar, you can see how much easier it was for me to create those little curves and those tiny lines with a pen versus with a mouse. And this is just a really easy way to summarize how useful an editing tablet can be because it offers that much more technical precision when you're working with brush adjustments, dodge and burning, or eraser type things as well. Now to put this in more simple terms, let's just say you're trying to create a super basic layer mask adjustment except on this canvas right here. So once again, my brush settings are the same as normal. This time I'm just using a soft round brush. As I begin to paint, nothing really changes besides the size of the brush stroke that we're creating. The actual fill and the opacity and how the edges look all stays the exact same as I create the brush stroke. However, if I'm using an editing tablet just with the pressure sensitivity checked off, doing the exact same motion, I can create a much more dynamic and changing brush stroke all in one continuous motion. So see how it goes from larger to smaller to larger again, all in one single brush stroke. That would not be possible while you're using the mouse. So once again, the editing tablet just offers that much more creative control to get those fine details that you don't get otherwise with a mouse. 
So now the big question becomes, do you actually need an editing tablet? And in my opinion, it depends on what type of photo editing you do. If you're just working in Lightroom where you're using very basic masking options and you're not really doing a whole bunch of brush adjustments, then maybe you won't notice the same kind of advantages as you would in Photoshop. Now, if you are someone who likes to use Photoshop on a regular basis, you use it to create masks, selective adjustments, or even use it for spot removal, like clone stamping or things like that, then using an editing tablet is totally worthwhile in my opinion. The one that I use is called the Wacom Intuos Pro. It's an older model. However, I love it because it has a few shortcut keys here to help streamline the workflow, but it is a little bit more expensive compared to other options. So if you wanted to get into an editing tablet, you can find ones for under $50 actually that are just the tablet with a pen. And then you can create the exact same adjustments that I just created with this tablet, but for under $50. So in my opinion, if you're kind of on the fence about it, under $50 is a pretty sweet price point to get into these kind of things. Personally, I love using an editing tablet for composite images just because I find it a little bit easier to work with layer masks and things like like that. However, if I'm just working in Lightroom, I tend to just use a mouse because adjusting sliders with an editing tablet doesn't really make that much of a difference to me. So it's just not really that worthwhile. With that said, if you're a Photoshop user and you're like, dang, I want to get one of these tablets for myself, then I have actually written a list of some of my favorite recommended tablets over on bewillcreative.com. You can find a link to that article down in the description below where I share a few of my favorite tablets for photo editing and graphic design. The tablets that you'll find there are these types of touchpad tablets as well as screen type tablets which actually show your photo on the tablet itself. So there are a couple different options. However, for photographers out there, I would recommend the touchpad tablet rather than the screen type tablet, just because then you're working on a monitor that you know and you can trust the colors on and things like that. So you don't get weird photo edits that you might end up with on a screen type editing tablet. So with that, that is all I have for you for today. And if you enjoyed today's video and learned something about editing tablets and make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference. And also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.